Then one of the judges of the city stood forth and said, Speak to us of crime and punishment. And he answered, saying, It is when your spirit goes wandering upon the wind that you alone and unguarded commit a wrong unto others and therefore unto yourself. And for that wrong committed, must you knock and wait a while unheeded at the gate of the blessed, like the ocean is your God's self, it remains forever undefiled. Remember that idea that psychology is really, yeah, it's where you refer to all the so-called gods and that sort of thing, but um, but it doesn't mean they're part God or something. And like the ether, it lifts, but the winged, even like the sun, is your God's self. So, see, each different part. Um, or perhaps your part that's in line with God. It knows not the ways of the mole, nor seeks it in the holes of the serpent. Okay, well, if it doesn't know everything, it's not a God. Um, but your God self dwells not alone in your being. So you can, what, what, what does God mean in this passage then? Much in you is still man, and much in you is not yet man, but a shapeless pygmy that walks asleep in the mist, searching for its own awakening. And of the man in you would I now speak, for it is he and not your God self, nor the pygmy in the mist, that knows crime and the punishment of crime. Well, your projection of yourself as a god, maybe that, that makes more sense. Oftentimes I've heard you speak of one who commits a wrong as though he were not one of you, but a stranger unto you and an intruder upon your world. But I say that even as the holy and the righteous cannot rise beyond the highest, which is in each of you, so the wicked and the weak cannot fall lower than the lowest, which is in you also. And as a single leaf turns not yellow, but with silent knowledge of the whole tree, so the wrongdoer cannot do wrong without the hidden will of you all. Like a procession, you walk together towards your God self. You are the way and the wayfarers. And when one of you falls down, he falls down for those behind him. A caution against the stumbling stone. Well, other people have to witness you and perhaps be influenced even by the fact of the physical presence, but uh, no one sins or atones for another. <coughs> A. And he falls for those ahead of him, who, though faster and surer of foot, yet removed not the stumbling block. And this also, through the word, lie heavy upon your hearts. The murdered is not unaccountable for his own murder, and the robbed is not blameless in being robbed. The righteous is not innocent of the deeds of the wicked. Well, they are if they haven't done anything, if they haven't said anything to promote them. Um, and the white handed is not clean in the doings of the felon. Yea, the guilty is oftentimes the victim of the injured, and still more often the condemned is the burden-bearer of the guiltless and the unblamed. You cannot separate the just from the unjust and the good from the wicked, for they stand together before the face of the sun, even as the black thread and the white are woven together. And when the black thread breaks, the weaver shall look into the whole cloth, and shall examine the loom also, if any one of you would bring to judgment unfaithful wife, let him also weigh the heart of her husband in scales, and measure his soul with measurements, and let him who would lash the offender look unto the spirit of the offended. And if any one of you would punish in the name of righteousness, and lay the axe unto the evil tree, let him see to its roots, and verily he will find the roots of the good and the bad, the fruitful and the fruitless, all entwined together in the silent heart of the earth. And you judges, who would be just? What judgment 
pronounce you upon him who through honest who though honest in the flesh yet is a thief in spirit what penalty lay you upon him who slays in the flesh yet is himself slain in the spirit and how prosecute you him who in action is a deceiver and an oppressor yet who also is aggrieved and outraged how shall you punish those whose remorse is already greater than their misdeeds. Is not remorse the justice which is administered by that very law which you would fain serve? Yet you cannot lay remorse upon the innocent, nor lift it from the heart of the guilty. Unbidden shall it call in the night, that men may awake and gaze upon themselves, and you who would understand justice, how shall you unless you look upon all deeds in the fullness of light. Only then shall you know that the erect and the fallen are but one man standing in the twilight between the night of his pygmy self and the night of his god self. Oh, that's super racist right there. Um, And that the cornerstone of the temple is not higher than the lowest stone in its foundation. Now, I listed this under Baha'i and Baha and Sufi, there's a Christian influence. I guess you could say that comes out stronger in that than what we've shared so far. Um, but it's also clear the Baha influence is most um, clear in this poem too. But you know, we have to have a holistic view.